Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and this is your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will proceed with an explanation of all ASCP lectures from its reading list. In today's video, we will talk about erythrocyte production and destruction. First, we have the maturation process, we need to know that erythrocytes devolve from pluripotential stem cells that give rise to erythroid progenitors. Burst forming unit erythroid and colony forming unit erythroid, both committed to the erythroid line. It takes approximately one week for the burst forming unit erythroid to mature to the colony forming unit erythroid and another week for the colony forming unit erythroid to become a pronormoblast, so approximately 18 to 21 days are required to produce a mature RBC from the burst forming unit erythroid. These erythroid progenitors then proceed to give erythroid precursors. The earliest morphologically recognizable erythrocyte precursor, the pronormoblast. The pronormoblast can divide into the next stage of development, the basophilic normoblast. These cells can divide, to the next stage, the polychromatic normoblast. There are typically three and occasionally as many as five divisions, so from a single pronormoblast, 8 to 32 mature RBCs usually result. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, activate notifications to get our new videos. If you like our content please press the like button, and share the video with your friends. If you have any questions leave a comment below. Maturation Sequence The process of cell maturation is a gradual process, with changes in shape and size starting with Pronormoblast The nucleus takes up much of the cell with a nucleus to cytoplasm ratio of 8 to 1. The nucleus is round to oval, containing one or two nucleoli. The cytoplasm is dark blue because of the concentration of ribosomes. The Golgi complex may be visible next to the nucleus as a pale, unstained area. The pronormoblast is present only in the bone marrow. Pronormoblast begins to accumulate the components necessary for hemoglobin production. The proteins and enzymes necessary for iron uptake and protoporphyrin synthesis are produced. Globin production begins. This stage lasts slightly more than 24 hours. The pronormoblast undergoes mitosis and gives rise to two daughter pronormoblasts. More than one division is possible before maturation into basophilic normoblasts. Chromatin begins to condense and the nucleus to cytoplasm ratio decreases to about 6 to 1. The chromatin stains are deep purple red. When stained, the cytoplasm may be a deeper, richer blue than in the pronormoblast. They are present only in the bone marrow. Detectable hemoglobin synthesis occurs. This stage lasts slightly more than 24 hours. The basophilic normoblast divides, giving rise to two daughter cells. More than one division is possible before cells mature into polychromatic normoblast. The condensation of chromatin reduces the diameter of the nucleus considerably, so the nucleus to cytoplasm ratio decreases from 4 to 1 to about 1 to 1 by the end of the stage. No nucleoli are present. This is the first stage in which the pink color associated with stained hemoglobin can be seen. The stained color reflects the accumulation of hemoglobin pigmentation over time and concurrent decreasing amounts of RNA. The color produced is a mixture of pink and blue. The polychromatic normoblast is present only in the bone marrow. Hemoglobin synthesis increases and the accumulation begins to be visible in the color of the cytoplasm. Cellular organelles are still present, particularly ribosomes, which contribute a blue aspect to the cytoplasm. Condensation of the nucleus and disappearance of nucleoli. This stage lasts approximately 30 hours. This is the last stage in which the cell is capable of division, producing daughter cells that mature and develop into orthochromic normoblast. The nucleus is completely condensed and the nucleus to cytoplasm ratio is approximately 1 to 2. The increase in the salmon pink color of the cytoplasm reflects nearly complete hemoglobin production. 
the orthochromic normoblast is not capable of division due to the condensation of the chromatin. It is present only in the bone marrow. Hemoglobin production continues on the remaining ribosomes using messenger RNA produced earlier. Late in this stage, the nucleus is ejected from the cell. This stage lasts approximately 48 hours. Polychromatic erythrocyte There is no nucleus. The cell is the same color as a mature RBC, salmon pink. It remains larger than a mature cell. The shape of the cell is not the mature biconcave disc but is irregular. The polychromatic erythrocyte cannot divide. It resides in the bone marrow for one day or longer and then moves into the peripheral blood for about one day before reaching maturity. The production of hemoglobin completes from residual messenger RNA using the remaining ribosomes. A small amount of residual ribosomal RNA is present and can be visualized with a vital stain as a mesh of small blue strands. This stage is about three days, with the first two days spent in the marrow and the third spent in the peripheral blood. Erythrocyte No nucleus is present in mature RBCs. The mature circulating erythrocyte is a biconcave disc measuring 7 to 8 mm in diameter on a stained blood film. It appears as a salmon pink staining cell with a central pale area that are is about one-third the diameter of the cell. The erythrocyte cannot divide. Mature red blood cells remain active in circulation for approximately 120 days. The mature erythrocyte delivers oxygen to tissues, releases it, and returns to the lung to be reoxygenated. Erythrokinetics Hypoxia which means too little tissue oxygen stimulates red blood cell production. To regulate the production of RBCs, the body requires a mechanism to detect whether there is adequate oxygen is being carried to the tissues. The primary oxygen sensing system of the body is located in the peritubular fibroblasts of the kidney which produce erythropoietin. When hypoxia is detected, erythropoietin, the major stimulatory cytokine for red blood cells, is produced. Erythropoietin has three major effects. 1. Allowing early release of reticulocytes from the bone marrow. 2. Preventing apoptotic cell death. 3. Reducing the time it takes for cells to mature in the bone marrow. Quantitative measurements of erythropoietin are performed on plasma and other body fluids by chemiluminescence. Reference interval is 4 to 27 milliunits per liter. Erythrocyte destruction. This occurs in two ways. One macrophage-mediated hemolysis, extravascular hemolysis. At any time, a volume of blood is in the spleen, generating an environment that is stressful to the cells. Movement through the red pulp is extremely slow. The available glucose in the surrounding plasma is depleted quickly. The pH is low, which promotes iron oxidation. In this environment, aged RBCs succumb to the various stresses and reduce ATP production, membrane systems begin to fail, the potassium-sodium pump is lost, selective permeability of the membrane is lost, and water enters the cell. The discoid shape is lost and the cell becomes a sphere that is rigid and is not able to squeeze through the narrow spaces to exit the spleen and is ingested by macrophages. 2. Mechanical hemolysis, fragmentation or intravascular hemolysis. Although most natural RBC deaths occur in the spleen, a small portion of RBCs ruptures within the lumen of blood vessels. Rupture of cells results in fragmentation and release of the cell contents into the plasma, this is called fragmentation or intravascular hemolysis. When the membrane of the RBC has been breached, the cell contents enter the surrounding plasma, haptoglobin, and hemopexin, rescuing hemoglobin so that its iron is not lost in the urine. Thank you for completing the video. Remember to ask for ASCP short notes, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.